Welcome back to the Indianapolis Colts Syndicate. Today we are doing training camp day two recap. The Colts had a day off on Thursday after day one of training camp, but they get back at it on Friday. And we're going to start with the inactives, of course. Okay, we have Juju Brents and Julian Blackman are still out dealing with their injuries. But a new addition to that list was Samson Ebucom, the new defensive end that we're getting. He came from San Francisco this offseason. He missed practice and had a sleeve on his right leg. So there's something going on with him. If I had to guess, you know, he was out there probably precautionary, just, you know, play it safe. It's early training camp. Preseason's not even here. So they have him sitting out. And, of course, Jonathan Taylor is still showing up to practice so that he doesn't get fined. You know, if players in the new CBA, if they don't go to training camp, it's $50,000 a day. So JT is still showing up to every practice, but he's not involved in any practices at all. Although he is, you know, he's there with the running back still. He's still helping the running backs out and helping get them prepared. But he himself is not actually participating in practice. All right, now that we have the inactives out of the way, let's get on to the quarterbacks. Where Anthony Richardson took first team reps all day long on day one. It was Gardner Minshew taking first team reps and Anthony Richardson was the second team. They swap on day two and Anthony Richardson had the first big play of camp for him with a 55 yard pass to Alec Pierce for a touchdown. And of course, there isn't going to be a clip of it on social media. I'm sure, you know, a new offense, they're not going to be putting their plays out there. But what I saw was that he rolled to the left, which makes it even that more impressive that he got a 55 yard touchdown on a play that he was rolling to the left. Okay. So with the good out of the way, let's talk about the bad. Okay. He missed some throws that were behind receivers. And I feel like that's kind of to be expected. You know, Anthony Richardson has accuracy issues. That's what everybody said. You know, the, the numbers say, you know, 53.8% is not great. So we know there are going to be accuracy issues that he's going to have to work through, especially with the speed of the NFL. And these balls being behind the receivers, to me, that seems fixable. Through OTAs and mini camps and different parts of the offseason where you're getting together with guys like those Sure, you're you're getting timing down a little bit, but those aren't live game reps. Like it, when it comes time for training camp, that's when and you're doing seven on seven, 11 on 11. Those are as close to live game reps as you're going to get to what you're going to get in the regular season. So he's got to get that timing down with the receiver. So I expect that to get better. You know, with everything we've heard about Anthony Richardson is that, you know, he's all about working to get better and he knows he needs to get better. So I expect him to continue to get better as training camp and the preseason goes along and, and as we get into the regular season. But for today, the team was working on first and second down, RPOs and run plays. And Anthony Richardson in the 11 on 11 periods, he went three for five. Gardner Minshew with the second team was six for eight. So what that right there, just that little bit right there tells me that when it comes to RPOs, Anthony Richardson, we should look to have him be more of a runner this year. It seems like he's either keeping the ball himself or he's handing the ball off. Whereas in Gardner Minshew, he's not really the runner type, right? So he's he's throwing the ball more. He's keeping it and trying to make plays more. So I think seeing that disparity even early on here in camp kind of shows you the difference between these two and what these two, you know, if Gardner starts the year, what you're going to get with him. If Anthony starts the year, what we're going to get with him. Okay, and keeping it on the offensive side of things, we're going to move to a running back, making a little bit of noise over the first day of camp, and that is Evan Hull, who's a fifth-round pick, in 2023 and he's 5'10 209 and so far over the first couple of days he's impressed fans that have been in attendance and here on day two he took a run 55 yards to the house so with everything going on with Jonathan Taylor it'll be interesting to see what happens we have Zach Moss on the roster Evan Hole looks to be making some noise and then Deion Jackson is also making plays in camp with ripping off multiple big time runs in today's practice alone he was also making some plays in day one one practice but what I heard today was he he ripped off a couple of big runs so one of them was for a really long touchdown so so far the running backs without JT being active in practice they're making some noise so that that makes the whole Jonathan Taylor thing like okay what are we doing maybe they're going to trade Jonathan Taylor who knows Okay, and I don't really want to think about trading Jonathan Taylor. So let's move on to the tight ends where Kylan Granson might be our best weapon at tight end, despite 
Jelani Woods and Drew Ogletree both being absolute freaks. We as Colts fans should feel really good about our tight end room. You know, especially in this type of offense that Shane Steichen's bringing in. I think a guy like Kylan Granson, who, if you really need him to, he can line up in the slot and be a mismatch for somebody out there. But getting Kylan Granson in space, he has shown throughout his career, even though he hasn't gotten the ball a whole lot because of the way the Colts situation has been since he's been drafted. But if he gets the ball in space, he's one of the best playmakers on the offense. And I think that's going to be readily apparent here in 2023, over the first couple of days, I mean, both days of practice, people are talking about Kylan Granson making plays. So I would expect Kylan Granson to be a big part of this Colts offense in 2023. And with the offense out of the way, let's talk about a little bit of defense. We're going to start with Shaq Leonard, who a couple of days ago, Chris Ballard said in his press conference before training camp started that Shaq Leonard was not cleared for contact yet, but that he was able to take part in drills and be a part of practice. And then on day one, he was a full participant. There wasn't contact. Um, he didn't have to worry about that. But here in day two, I saw a report saying that on a run play, Zach Moss got thudded by Shaq Leonard in the hole. Now, obviously, they don't have full pads on right now, so they're not going crazy hard but the fact that he's making any contact at all tells me that they were okay with what they saw on day one and they want to progress forward so that right there like that tells me for sure he's going to be ready for week one no matter what anybody's told you throughout this offseason what's happening right now should tell you Shaq Leonard is going to be ready for week one and we don't have to be worried about whether or not he's going to be himself I think he's going to be just fine because I also saw another report that said that Shaq just started kind of dancing with the music that was happening and then it kind of a chain reaction started to happen where one guy over here started dancing a couple guys started dancing and then he had a group of guys dancing and that's the kind of energy you know we had a video a few days ago talking about Shaq and, and what he means to this team and and how vital he's going to be in 2023 and and the energy that he brings is such a big part of that. The, the energy he brings to the entire team, just having him back on the field is going to make such a big difference for this team. And it's already happening on day two of training camp. And last little nugget we have here about day two of training camp is going to be about Kenny Moore continuing to look really good. There's nothing really specific here uh, for me to go on today, but, but from everything I'm seeing, Kenny Moore is looking like the best version of Kenny Moore. And as a Colts fan, that's really exciting. I But I, I want to see that continue through training camp, through the preseason, and into the regular season. What we saw from Kenny Moore last year was pretty disappointing. But if he could be the best version of himself this upcoming season, as you know, basically he's the leader, he's the veteran presence in this pretty much the entire secondary now, not even just the cornerback room. It's it's the entire secondary. And I think what we see from him in 2023, again, could be the best version of himself and could help him get a new payday either from the Colts, hopefully from the Colts. But if not the Colts, somebody's going to pay Kenny Moore. So with that, that wraps up the recap for day two of training camp. Let me know what you think down below. What excites you the most? What do you look Looking forward to what do you want to see from the team you let me know down in the comments section okay don't forget to subscribe and keep coming back for more Colts content I'll see you for the next video